So I wanted to bring you this article that was written by Yuri Shapira, May 17th of 2023, and this was in I-24 News. The architect and activist who want to build Jerusalem's third temple. Acclaimed architect Haim Doton and scholar activist Hillel Weiss, who incidentally was the spokesman for the Sanhedrin, proposal meant to build Jerusalem, the temple city, and the road to peace. Haim Doton, an acclaimed architect who has won several international awards and also serves as a professor of architecture at leading institutes in China, recently became involved in the ambitious project of designing the third Jewish temple in Jerusalem. So here is the architect and he's sitting on this glass bottom bridge that he built in China. Known for his extravagant projects such as the Zheng Jiaji Grand Canyon Glass Bridge in China, renowned as the tallest glass bottom bridge in the world, Doton last year joined the right wing activist and literature scholar Professor Hillel Weiss and pitched a session of the Jerusalem International Conference from the umbilicus mundi to the four corners of the earth and back. The conference scheduled to take place this past summer in Jerusalem was organized by Yad Bin Zvi Institute, a prestigious research center in Israel. Doton's pitch, Building Jerusalem, the Temple City, and the Road to Peace, was divided into three sections. The first was dedicated to the transportation and economy of the future Temple City of the Israeli capital. The next pitch, entitled From Vision to Practice, described future plans for the Jerusalem of the Third Temple Era, inspired by biblical sources. In the center of the plan, an open structure will be built above the old city of Jerusalem. It will be shaped like a tent, a cloud, or a mountain. Six or eight bridges will connect constructive towers, which will combine stairways and elevators, supporting Upper Jerusalem, the outline seen by I-24 News stated. A copy of the sketch also showed a cylinder-shaped structure connected by bridges. Doton's pitch was dismissed by the Yad Bin Zvi Institute, which told I-24 News that the content of the paper handed by Doton and Weiss did not match the main themes of the conference, which is mainly focused on the historic side of the story and doesn't pretend to deal with the future. In response, Weiss said, I think we are considered a threat to the idea of internationalization of Jerusalem and all kind of interreligious or anti-religious plans regarding the city. Several questions remain open in the proposal. Who would be in charge of the new temple? What would happen to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, one of the most sacred sites in Islam, located on the Temple Mount? What would the consequences of rebuilding a new Jewish temple be amid the complex flashpoint geopolitical atmosphere of the Middle East? This may be another far-fetched attempt that is ignored by authorities, but the fact that a prestigious architect who is secular and doesn't have any political background is involved in such a project makes this case all the more interesting, if not more tangible. Plans to rebuild the third Jewish temple on the Temple Mount the holiest site in Judaism and the third holiest in Islam are not new but have mostly faced strong resistance. 
In 1990, a deadly riot erupted on the Mount after a fringe Jewish group, namely Gershon Solomon and the Temple Mount Faithful then, tried to lay the cornerstone of a third temple. Weiss himself was once a member of the Sanhedrin organization, a small body that aims to build a UN-like body based on the Jewish Torah law. I only believe in peace and I don't want any bloodshed, Weiss said. Who funds the Temple Institute? It was founded and is headed by Rabbi Israel Ariel and he's the one who was talking about that people should be killed by the sword and the women not killed by the sword but I suppose they would be imprisoned if they did not obey the Sanhedrin's laws. Its current director general is Dovid Schwartz. And that word actually means black. New York billionaire Henry Suica has supported the Institute. The Israeli government has also provided funding. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem has spent approximately $30 million on preparations for rebuilding the Jewish temple. All the temple articles are completed, as we know, including the brazen altar mentioned in Revelation 11.1. The Jewish Sanhedrin has been reestablished in 2004 after a hiatus of 2,000 years. Israel's religious leaders are now regularly calling for the rebuilding of Israel's temple as a way to world peace and religious harmony. Any peace treaty with Israel must resolve the building of Israel's temple. Well, the problem with that is they have the superiority attitude that everybody else is beneath them and they are superior and everyone else is worthless. So how are you going to have world peace with that attitude? So it was this rabbi that was the spokesman for the Sanhedrin, Hillel Weiss, that was with the architect and showed this sketch to the group in Israel. And apparently they didn't accept exactly what his sketch showed. But prior to this, Professor Hillel Weiss is a professor emeritus at Bar Ilan University. And he was blasted for calling for the annihilation of Palestinians. And this happened way before the attacks happened from Hamas. And all of these Palestinians are being crammed into the southern portion of Gaza. Even though most contemporary rabbinic schools are not as hostile to Gentiles as medieval rabbinic schools were, such as Maimon, Mammon, some Orthodox rabbinic schools hold extremely conservative views. For example, scholars from the Zionist Harav Kuk Yeshiva are schooled in the doctrine that Jews and Gentiles have different kinds of souls. But the thing that just shocked me most of all is seeing this video clip of Rabbi Richman who used to come here to um, some of the churches around and I told you that he was part of establishing the Noahide movement in Texas and he's got these followers one of whom is Jim Long's a Noahide and he's just you know like he's got a hook in the nose and he's being pulled towards them. Um, this statement by Rabbi Richmond really shocked me, but I didn't think that this was his personality at all. But about this clip that I'm going to show you, it says, this grotesque supremacy is expressed by Rabbi Richmond, a former director of the Temple Institute one of the extreme Jewish groups whose mission is to build the third temple. So in this clip you can see exactly how the Antichrist, which is the anti-gospel, anti-Jesus attitude that they have, that they had 2,000 years ago, 
and now they're being resurrected to be in the time of Jacob's trouble so that God can bring forth his wrath upon them and them being Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and souls of men that they're responsible for, including killing their own prophets, including um, one of the first Christian martyrs that was a Jew, Stephen. So this statement by Rabbi Richmond is another Sanhedrin rabbi that wants to build the third temple and has been working diligently towards that. And I already showed you Rabbi Israel Ariel's statements from this website, electricintifada.net. And it was recorded by David Sheen. And it says, Temple Movement Rabbi Proselytizes for Genocide. So this gentleman, David Sheen, was at this meeting, and this was by Israel Ariel, head of the Sanhedrin and the Temple Institute, and it was recorded on September 9th of 2015. So let me just tell you about this video. I actually played a clip of this video in another video that I made, and he attended this meeting and recorded what... Israel Ariel said, and it was on September 9th, a group calling itself the Nascent Sanhedrin, a reconstituted council of Jewish sages, held court in Jerusalem and accused the pontiff and other world leaders of crimes against Jewish people. Speaking to a crowd of about 40 men and a handful of women at the Diaspora Yeshiva Seminary in the old city of Jerusalem, the leaders of the Sanhedrin gave a series of speeches excoriating Pope Francis, Obama, and the European Union, the United Nations, and other international bodies for not supporting Israel's claims to exclusive patrimony over all of historic Palestine. For three hours, the rabbis oscillated between accusing world leaders of plotting genocide against the Jewish people and themselves calling for Jews to commit genocide against Muslims, Christians, and other non-Jews. The most extreme statements of the afternoon came from the head of this Sanhedrin, Rabbi Yisrael Ariel, who claimed that according to the 12th century Jewish sage Maimonides, which is Moses Maimon, which I discovered was Mammon, known as a fallen angel, the son of Satan. The Jewish people are commanded to kill non-Jewish people who do not agree to abandon Christianity and Islam and be governed by Jewish law. This writer was present and recorded the Sanhedrin's proceedings, including a call by Ariel for genocide against non-Jews and you can play the video and I will put a link in the description box to this electricintifada.net and this is what the Torah commanded us he explained when thou drawest nigh unto a city to fight against it then proclaim peace unto it Maimonides says that they must agree to follow the seven Noahide laws so you've got Mammon Maimon saying that the Christians and everyone has to follow the Noahide laws. So Satan's really giving this directive. Meaning you ask them, do you follow the seven laws? And if so, we will allow you to live. If not, you kill all of their males by sword. You only leave the women. How do you leave them? They must all agree to follow the seven laws, and that is how you impose the seven laws on that city. We will conquer Iraq and Turkey, and we will get to Iran, too. We will impose the seven Noahide laws on all of these places. You say, I call upon you in peace. And if they raise the flag of surrender and say, from now on there is no more Christianity, no more Islam, the mosques and the Christian spires and their crosses come down. From now on we follow the seven Noahide laws, he said. Ariel went on to suggest that Jewish people should also kill our former president. They suggested killing former President Obama. 
And therefore, Maimonides says that if you see a person in the street who does not follow the seven laws, this is what he says, if we have the might, you have to kill him. If you catch O on the street, you know that he does not follow the seven laws. A man in the audience interjected, you're commanded to kill him? Ariel responds, sorry. And the man repeats, you're commanded to kill him, and the sooner the better. Ariel responds in the affirmative. And this is why we have Maimonides. So they've chosen their master as this son of Satan. And this is why Jesus called them, you are of your father, the devil. The Sanhedrin was called this by the Messiah himself. If someone threatens you, you ruin him you, to kill him. You kill him first. In Ariel's comments on Obama, followed the reading of a long list of charges against him and the Pope and other world leaders and conspiracy to conduct theft of the land of Israel from the people of Israel and bloodshed, murder, and standing idly by the blood of others which threatens the very existence of Israel if not the total genocide of the people of Israel. The Sanhedrin claims the land of Israel as from the Euphrates to the Nile, and this would mean Israeli occupation of parts of Syria, Iraq, Egypt, and the whole of the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip and Jordan, and probably parts of Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Kuwait. Ariel is the former rabbi of the Jewish seminary in Yemit an illegal settlement that Israel established in the Sinai during its occupation of Egyptian territories from 1967 and the settlement was excavated in 1982 after a peace treaty was agreed with Egypt. In the 1981 elections Ariel was number two on the electoral list for Koch, the extremist group led by the late Rabbi Meir Kahana. Kahana was a fanatic who called for the expulsion by force of all Palestinians from the West Bank, Gaza, and current day Israel. So, Ayub Kara, the only Palestinian lawmaker at Israel's ruling Likud party, actively proselytizes in Palestinian communities in present day Israel trying to convince residents to formally adopt the seven laws according to the rabbis who work in tandem with Kara and these efforts are supported by Israel's interior ministry. In June the church of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes in the Galilee was torched and defaced with Hebrew language graffiti denouncing idol worship and soon after Ben C. Gopstein, another Jewish extremist leader, publicly called for the burning of churches designating Christians as idol worshippers and citing Maimonides, Mammon, the son of Satan. Now look at this. How does Musa Ibn Maimon become Maimonides who came up with this? strange distortion of the original name. And Jesus told the Pharisees and Sadducees, you are of your father the devil. Because, see, this oral Torah came down in history until it reached the generation of Moses Maimon, or Maimonides, and he codified the whole law in the Mission Torah and Talmud. And so they have chosen a different master than the Lord God of Heaven, and this master is somebody that they're believing and all of his deeds that he says in these books they are trying to force on others but we see the Lord revealed to me about mammon not only meaning you know that these religious rulers were steeped in wealth and greed and their ancient monarchy was and they neglected 
the poor, the needy, those and the fatherless, and they fatten themselves. And so the Messiah came down and dwelt among them, a tabernacle with them, but they didn't recognize him. They were steeped in their oral Torah tradition, handed down by whatever the rabbis said and thought were the interpretations. And so Maimon just codified the entire thing. And he was in Cordoba, Spain, when the Muslims were there, and so he uh, appealed with the Muslims, and some of what he encoded was part of the Islamic thought. And so Jesus said, you are of your father the devil. So it was a prophecy of Jesus showing that they were mammon, Maimon, the son of Satan. And they, Jesus said that you will do what your father tells you to do. Basically, they're following him as their master. And so you can see how in this clip of Rabbi Richmond exactly how they are going to have a king sitting on their throne that they will want others to worship him. And if they don't, they will die. At a forum for Jewish seminary students in August, in answer to the question, are you in favor of burning churches in the land of Israel, yes or no, Gopstein responded, you have to burn. Are you for Maimonides or against Maimonides? Yes, of course. Didn't Maimonides rule that we must burn? Idol worship must be burned. Yes, of course, of course. That's Maimonides. That's Mammon. Lucifer. Simply yes. Why are you even asking? You have any doubt? Named after a council of Jewish sages that existed more than 2,000 years ago, the self-declared Sanhedrin was established in 2004, and its founders aspire for it to subsume the secular structures of the Israeli government and turn the country from a Jewish ethnocracy to a Jewish theocracy. At present, the Sanhedrin does not have an official mandate from the Israeli government, and its pronouncements are not treated with uh, deference by all Orthodox rabbis. Nevertheless, the fact that one of the most respected Talmud scholars in the world, Aidan Steinsaltz, has served as the group's president since 2004, grants it some legitimacy. Steinsaltz also received the president's prize from former President Shimon Perez for his Talmud scholarship. I think he may have passed away recently, actually. The Sanhedrin's website at the time of publication listed Steinsaltz as the group's president. But I think he's since passed away. According to a May 2013 report published by the Israeli group Ir Amim, the Temple Institute is directly funded by the Israeli government to the tune of hundreds of thousands of shekels annually. The September 9th session of the Sanhedrin that year adjourned without any definitive decision on the charges against the Pope, Obama, and other world leaders for alleged crimes against the Jewish people. The group announced that the court would reconvene and the trial would resume in Jerusalem on the 7th of October. Kind of a coincidental date for the recent attacks, don't you think? Meanwhile, its head rabbi almost certainly continues to receive financial support from Netanyahu's government to help fulfill his dominionist aspirations. And to be a believer in dominionism, that is the theory or doctrine that Judaism has a divine mandate to assume positions of power and influence over all aspects of society and government. The belief that God gave humans the right to exercise control over the natural world. So behind the scenes they have been meeting with the 
renowned architect and coming up with the plan for the building of the third temple. I thought a long time ago that they already had a blueprint for it like they do for the Sanhedrin building, but this just shows that their goal is unity and world dominance. One world government with their king sitting on their throne and when I show this clip of Rabbi Richmond's statement you will see exactly how the Antichrist is going to sit in their temple and proclaim himself to be God and demand worship. They have traded out the blood covenant with many that Jesus made with the world for Maimonides and his sick ideas that actually are satanic ideas. God said in the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill, and they're going around saying just the opposite. Anybody who's not as superior as they are, they will die. So, this is what is really causing all of this aggravation amongst the surrounding nations. They're hearing this rhetoric. And so, in some ways, it's putting a damper on them elevating themselves. But what would be the one thing that would cause them to be able to carry on? And that is to make the blood covenant with the red heifer, with all the Jewish people, to serve in their temple or to be so-called cleansed from their sins when Jesus did it all as the Messiah, the King of Kings, the King of Israel eternally to reign forever there. And you can see how easily this is the Antichrist spirit right there in this Sanhedrin. Anti-Gospel, anti-Jesus, anti-Yeshua, anti-Christ, which is Messiah. And they're going to put some other king on the throne and demand that the world bow down to him. I just wanted to give you this news update that this is what they were planning in the summer is meeting with the architect for the third temple and trying to get the plans solidified. We know that their plan is to slaughter the red heifer at the time of Passover come spring of 2024. So as soon as they accept that covenant with many with a red heifer's blood, you can expect that things are going to stampede with the Lord. <laughs> this is following Maimonides telling them to kill the red heifer. And this is what the Temple Institute states. Tenth red heifer will be prepared by the Messiah. In recounting this historical record in his commentary to the Mishnah, the great Maimon, Maimonides, known as Mammon, son of Satan, ends with the enigmatic statement, and the tenth red heifer will be accomplished by the king, the Messiah. May he be revealed speedily. Amen. May it be God's will. With this amazing statement, Maimonides recounts an ancient tradition that the tenth red heifer is associated with the Messianic era. Does this perhaps mean that the appearance of a red heifer in these waning end times is an indication of forerunner of the appearance of the Messiah himself who will officiate at its preparation? For the past 2,000 years, perhaps it is because the time was not right. Israel was far from being ready. But now, what could it mean for the times we live in to have the means for purification so close at hand? With the words of Maimonides in mind, we cannot help but wonder and pray. If there are now red heifers, is ours the era that will need them? It is fitting that we pay particular attention 
to a Midrashic teaching. So Maimonides, Mammon, Maimon, the son of Satan, is directing them to have another blood covenant with someone other than the true king of kings, Yeshua himself, Jesus himself, who died for their sins, that they might be filled with the Holy Spirit and rise up from death to life. And so they are rejecting the redemption of God for themselves. And they will be having another master. And Jesus said, you cannot have two masters. You will either hate the one and love the other, or despise the one and love the other. They hate Jesus, they despise him, and yet they have accepted another master. Mammon, Maimon, the son of Satan. And Jesus told them, you are of your father, the devil. For he was a murderer from the beginning. And what do they want to do in the last days? They want to murder. They want to kill everyone who's not as superior and intellectual as they are. Superior in every way. In fact, they actually say that they are perfect. One more shocker. In the Catholic Church, how do they see God and Jesus? They say he is equal to the Father in his divinity, but he is inferior to the Father in his humanity. Absolutely not. They are one in the same. If you believe that he's Almighty God who came to dwell in a perfect tabernacle as the second perfect Adam, there's no way that you can say that he is inferior. We learn that he is the exact image of the Father. I and the Father are one. What I told you is because they have exchanged the eternal blood of the Lord God himself for a red heifer. They are still in their sins. Jesus was in the temple and told the Pharisees and Sadducees and the council of the Sanhedrin that unless they believed I am he, that they would die in their sins. And so the rabbis are saying that in order for all the Jews of the world to be purified from their sin, they have to have this blood of the red heifer. They have to sprinkle the ashes on the people and towards the temple. But the man of sin would be someone who is telling them that their sins have to be covered in this other blood of a red heifer. And we know in the New Testament it says that no red heifer, no other sacrifice can ever be as superior as the king Messiah himself. So we learn that the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. And he will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie and all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They are still in their sins and no red heifer is going to purify them from their sins because God's testimony accomplished it through the Messiah, the King of Israel, Jesus. We see who is the man of lawlessness. This connects well with the lawless one's action in the temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction, or the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you that I told you these things, and you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus 
will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Following a common Semitic idiom, a man of lawlessness would refer to a person whose life is characterized by his opposition to God's rule and reign. So Maimonides is getting them to accept another king and another blood covenant that can never take away their sins. So they are losing their redemption. Further descriptors are applied to this lawless one. He will be revealed employing terminology Paul reserved most often for the activity of God in making known something hidden. The passive voice in verse 3 of is revealed makes it difficult to discern whether God is the one doing the revealing or if this is the work of an evil agent such as Satan. The man of lawlessness both opposes and exalts himself over every so-called God or object of worship. Paul elsewhere employs the Greek word for opposes as a title for Satan, the adversary. The only other use of the Greek word for exalts himself, hyperero, in Paul bears connotations of conceit. As it likely does here, Paul is careful to say every so-called God, indicating the false deities of pagan worship, the term for object of worship, this man of lawlessness seeks to make himself the central person of worship beyond any other religious objects or personages in his day. Beyond that, the man of lawlessness exalts himself over the very worship of God Almighty. So that's what mammon is doing, truly exalting himself as the master teaching them to follow him instead of God's testimony of eternal life. The lawless one's efforts to receive worship result in his taking his seat in the temple of God. Now I should say this again. Let me be very clear that this is not all Jewish people. This is a very small sect that is trying to elevate themselves in the Knesset so they can have total control over the rest of the people. And I've already showed the statements that they've made about what they feel about the other people and the Jewish women as well. They want to take the Jewish women back 2,000 years to the time of women can't speak, women can't talk about God, women can't have the Torah, you know, um, women can't drive. I mean, it's just absurd. So it's a superiority attitude that's in the toilet going down to hell and that's the best way to sum this up so technically since mammon maimon is the son of satan he very well could be the man of sin because they're still in their sin and his directive keeps them in their sin so that they perish instead of leading them towards the true King Messiah Yeshua to where they won't perish because God Almighty has paid the, pr the bride's price in his own blood to take a bride for himself from amongst the nations because they rejected his testimony for themselves. And the man of sin could be keeping them in their sin by telling them, all of these 2,000 years, there's no sacrifice for their sin until their King Messiah that they put on their throne performs and participates at, and officiates in the Red Heifer Ceremony. It will be a king, and he will be there. So these are their words, and I'm just relaying to you how it's all playing out. Thank 
God for the Holy Spirit revealing this. I used to think that they were a good, honest, wonderful group, and now I see their own words give them away. And thank God the Lord revealed to me that mammon is mammon, man of sin. And remember I told you that the moon used to be called sin, and I thought it would be an Islamic person. Well, mammon, mammon, combined Islamic ideas into the codification of the law that the Jews and Muslims follow. So there you have the man of sin with that as well. Oh, I'm going to show you a clip of the former director of the Temple Institute, a member of the Sanhedrin, Rabbi Shman, and he has not been the director for quite some time now. But um, he did travel around taking money from Christian churches, Messianic churches. I went to see him speak on two different occasions. And I am totally shocked by this statement of his. Um, this shows exactly what's in their mind, in their hearts. And at the time that you view the clip, if you haven't seen it yet, um, it shows how when they build the third temple, how the Antichrist will expect people to bow down and worship him when he's sitting in their third temple. Listen to this clip of Rabbi Richman saying to this Noahide ex-Christian what they actually believe that the Christians should do. I want to say this to our Christian friends, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just, to, just to call it as it is and say it straight out, you know, you, you guys are worshiping one Jew. That's the mistake. You should be worshiping every single one of us because we all die for your sins every single day. And that's exactly what's going on here. Yeah. We're, we're all God's first point. We're dying for your sins right now because, because the Jewish people in the land of Israel are the bulwark right. against the orcs. Okay, the orcs are coming, not to a theater ne near you, but to your home. You can see the writing on the wall, can't you? So everybody needs to know that these architecture plans were being planned out this summer, and the time is getting closer and closer to where they want to rule the entire world and elevate themselves as superior beings. With that, I'll just say, wow, stunning stuff, don't you think? So we know that the Lord is going to slay them with the breath of his mouth. That's all I have for now. I hope this enlightened you to see what's going on. So I will talk to you in the next video. And like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for any support you can give to my channel. And I appreciate that so much. God bless everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.